So let's have fun. As you guys are finding 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I want to tell you it's so funny that my wife read the verse that she read to you this morning. Amen. Because she, she doesn't know what I'm going to preach, but the Lord does. What was your verse again? Shout it out. What's it say? They defeated their enemies by the praise in their mouth and the word in their hand. How about that? They defeated their enemies. They didn't battle with their enemies. They defeated their enemies by the praise in their mouth and the word in their hand. Amen. They defeated their enemies. Am I sitting in a room today? If I'm not yet, I will be by the end of the day. Am I sitting in a room full of people today who have won their battles? Amen. You have won the victory. Amen. Come on now. Somebody just praise God. Why? Because it is not you who is fighting. It is the Lord before you. Amen. The battle is not yours, says the Lord. Give the... All right, let's just, let me get into my sermon. Revelation 12 and 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's what the Bible does. The Bible say they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their, their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. This verse does not say that they constantly battled with him. This verse does not say that they fought battles every day. This verse does not say that they toiled every day, amen, and, and, and that they got in the ring and boxed every day. This, this verse says that they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. So I'm here to tell you today that you need two things to be victor victorious in God. Amen. You need the blood of the Lamb. How many of you are covered by the sweet blood of Jesus Christ? Amen. If you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you should have victory in your life. Amen. Now, if you have not obtained victory yet, all you've got to do is open up your mouth and let a testimony begin to come out. Amen. Begin to tell people how good God's been to you. Amen. I'm tired of the foolishness in the world. I'm tired of the foolishness on social media. It's time to get yourself somewhere and tell somebody just what God has done on your behalf. Amen. Because if you want to be an overcomer, you do it through the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Anybody in this room today got a testimony? Amen. Come on. Now, anybody in this room got a testimony? If you shouted amen through your testimony, you should also have a victory. Amen. Well, pastor, I'm going through some stuff. That's all right. Strap your seatbelt on because you will be an overcomer through the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Somebody ought to testify today. Somebody ought to testify today. Somebody ought to talk about the goodness of God. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. I made it through. It wasn't always easy, but we made it through. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Romans 8 and 28 says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. This verse ought to make all believers excited. This verse ought to encourage all believers. And we know, do we? Do we? Because if you did, your praise would disturb my preaching right now. If you did, no devil out of hell would be trying to convince you right now that you are not who God is saying that you are. If you really believe this verse this morning, no devil would be able to tie you up and tie you down and tangle you up and steal your praise because you would look at that devil and say, Devil, I already know that he's going to work all things out for my good. Amen. He's going to do it because he loves me and because I'm called according to his purpose. I know that I know that I know that I know not maybe could be so not he might do it we know this is an absolute we know we ought to know today we ought none of us I'm just going to be honest with you and preach like an evangelist which means I'm going to slap you right in the face with it and walk back as if I'll never be in this place again we ought to know today we know that all things, everybody say all things. Put that verse up there for me, boys. We know that all things, say it again, all things. All things. Do you believe that today? Yes. Come on now. We know. What? Hey, 
Tell me what you know. I know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen. The next time you're walking down the street and somebody says, what do you know today? I know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I may not know a lot of things in this world, but I know that everything that happens in my life, he'll work it out for my good. We know. Say it again, all things. things. Not some things, all things. I could stop right here, church, and we ought to to be able to have victory right here. The problem is, is some of us have quoted this too long and too many times that we've forgotten the power of it. We know that all things, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Come on now, do you love the Lord? You see, there's two prerequisites to getting the first part of this verse. If you love the Lord and if you're called according to His purpose, then guess what? I know that all things are going to work out for my good. Amen. Why? Because I love the Lord and I'm called according to His purpose. And the Word of God cannot lie. Amen. You got laid off yesterday. That's all right. I know that all things are going to work out for your good. The doctor gave you bad report yesterday. That's all right. How do you know? I know that all things are going to work out for your good. I know that all things y'all going to make me preach hard today. I, I thought, man, after two verses I, they'd already be fired up and ready. I thought, man, it's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. But if I have to convince you that it's good, it ain't going to be easy. If I have to convince you that you got victory before the battle even begins, it ain't going to be easy. But you know what? There's about 50 people in this room. I ain't got to convince you that the victory is already yours before you even get to the battle. Amen. The Lord said there's more for you than against you. The Lord said the victory is yours. No matter what the devil said, we know that all things work out together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according his purpose amen and God is in control of everything of your life shout out I made it through my good Lord I'm not stuck in despair I'm not stuck in dis- distress I'm not stuck in depression I'm not stuck in poverty I'm not stuck in sickness why because I made it through Romans 8 doesn't stop there. It goes on down to verse 31. And it says, what then should we say to these things? Woo! What then should we say to these things? What should we say to situations that seem like they've got no answer? What do I say to my past? What do I say to bankruptcy? What do I say to hate? What do I say to poverty? What do I say to despair? What do I say to my latest layoff? What do I say to that devil? What do I say to that pain in my body? What do I say to those eyes? Come on, somebody. What do I say to those eyes that just can't see? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hey! What then shall I say? Say it again, all things. What then shall I say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, you're getting there. You're getting there. Oh, but... But I made it through. All right. Go ahead and sit down because you're going to get tired before the day's over. What then? What then should I say to these things? What things? The things that make you lose sleep at night. What should you say to those things? What should you say to the people who have abandoned you? What should you say to the people that hate you what do you say I had somebody even ask me this week preacher what should I say say. 
What do I say when the enemy comes in like a flood? What do I say when the only option seems that I should just give up? What should I say when, I, when I'm so lonely at night and the Lord knows that I just need a mate, that I'm looking for somebody that I can love? What do I say when the doctor says there's nothing else that we can do? Come on, what was it? What, what was it that, you, that the doctors just declared is no longer in your body? Diabetes. Say it again. Diabetes. Say it again. Diabetes. How long did you have it? 15 years. 15 years. Get, come on. Come on, somebody. What then shall I say to these things when the doctor says you got diabetes for 15 years and then one day the doctor looks at you and says you ain't got it no more? What then shall I say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Somebody in your church, not the next church down the road. Somebody in your church. Fifteen years. Na 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 na. Nay, God is good. <laughs> When you go home today and you think to yourself, there wasn't nothing for me to talk about in church today. For 15 years, diabetes in his body. And just a couple weeks ago, the doctor said, you don't need to be doing this anymore. You don't need this medicine. You don't need these shots. You know, how in the world does that happen? When all these things come against you, you look at diabetes and say, if God be for Y'all there yet? Woo. Woo. We preaching. I could go all through this crowd and just pick y'all out. And just pick y'all out. And just pick you out. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? I'm coming to you because you're going to tell them how long yours was too. When you, when you get to the point that you don't even pray about it anymore because it, it just becomes part of your life. When you get to the point where sickness is just normal. When you get to the point almost two decades that you got Lyme disease in your body. Two decades. And you get to the point, I'm talking to somebody, when you get to the point in your life where it's so common and normal in your life to go through stuff that you don't even really pray about it anymore. You still love the Lord. You still pray. But it's so common to get sick, to regurgitate, to not be able to eat, to have maybe a handful of foods that's good for you. And then one day you just you just say, Lord, I'm going to keep trusting you. But I woke up with, with, with Lyme disease today. And I, and I woke up with lupus today. And I woke up with diabetes today. Lord, I'm going to keep trusting you. But for five years and 10 years and 15 years and 20 years, I, I've been waking up with, but Lord, I'm going to trust you until one day in Covenant Church, you, you get in a prayer line almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. 20 years. Come on, come on. And standing about right in this area right here. And the Holy Ghost of God came down and fire set upon her body and extracted Lyme disease for 20 years. I'm going to tell you, he's not done just yet. He's not done. If God be for us. Yeah. Woo, let it be safe. Walk with me. Can you walk with me? Whew. I'm going to tell the devil right now he's a liar. Because you can't, can I, can I just tell you your story a little bit? You came to this church because you had a need. You needed help. And you came to this church and you've been here ever since. And every year when the deacons deal with folk, because people need help. And sometimes we have to ask the question, how many folks stay? Or how many folks, you know, will, will become a part of a church after the church helps them? Well, I know one. 
I know at least one. I don't. What then shall I say to these things? I'm trying to preach a sermon and the Holy Ghost is all over me. What then shall I say to these things? If God before us, who will be against us? Y'all ever, you might not remember this, but I do. You and I talked about it. Y'all know those bell ringers? Y'all about to see them, and then in the next couple of weeks, those bell ringers that stand out there, if you ain't messed up yet, you, you, your spoon has fell out of your bow this morning. Holy Ghost of God is all over this place. The power of God is all over this place. She ringing that bell. I won't tell them where and when. She's ringing that bell. Amen. And she's delivered. God, she's, she's delivered. And somebody, you remember this? You know what I'm about to tell. As somebody from her past that she used to do it with, that knew her, somebody that wanted her hooked again, somebody that wanted her to waste her money on it again, came up to her. She's trying to, she's trying to earn money through the bucket, trying to be a good person. And some person who, ha- who doesn't know all things comes up and gives her a donation, but inside the donation is a little extra gift. She said, Pastor, I could taste it when they put it in my hand because you were on it for so many years. Oh, I feel God. She said, I could taste it. And the person that handed it to her was making comments about getting on it again. Here, here's the first little bit. And inside the money that they gave her to put in the bucket was something that she could taste because it had been in her system. But as soon as they walked away, Holy Ghost reminded her, baby, that's not you anymore. You've been delivered by the power of God. You've been delivered, oh, come on, by the blood of Jesus. Hey, that ain't you no more. That ain't, I say, that ain't you no more. <laughs> Woo! What then should I say to these things? I got drugs in my hand. Hey, but if God be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> Woo! She said, she said, I took the money. I put it in the bucket. I took the stuff and I put it in the trash. I flushed it. I got rid of it. And she said on that day, what then shall we say to these things if God be for us? Thank you, baby. Come on. I don't know about you, but I made it through. That's what it looks like to see ex-drug addicts, hey, hey, hugging each other and say, I made it through. I was on drugs, but God reached down and I made it through. I don't know about you, but I made it through. Can you give me more? Give me more. Romans 8 and 37 says, Yet in all these things, there's that word, all things again. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Y'all hear what I'm telling you today? Y'all hear what I'm telling you today? You hear what the evangelist is preaching to you today? Yet, yet, I thought I was going to have to give up. Yet, I thought I had diabetes and lupus and, and Lyme disease and 
heart disease and I thought I wasn't going to go to church today even though I got an extra hour of sleep. I thought I was going to get a divorce and for those of you that did, I thought divorce was going to kill me. I thought the death of my loved one was going to kill me. Yet, yet, Jezebel thought she's going to take me down. Hate thought she's going to take me down. Unforgiveness thought she's going to take me down. Yet, in all of these things, say it all things. Y'all getting this yet? Y'all, y'all. Yet, in all of these things, perfect, thank you. Yet, in all of these things, we, we, he didn't say white folk. He didn't say black folk. He didn't say Jews. He didn't say Gentiles. He didn't say Asian. He didn't say rich and poor. We. We. You've been saved two days, you part of we. You've been saved 80 years, you part of we. You rich, poor, doesn't matter what race you are, we. Hey! My good Lord Almighty. Yet in all these things, we are more. Y'all getting this? My wife just preached this just a couple weeks ago. If you're new to us today, you're welcome. <laughs> Yet in all these things, what are you? I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. Huh? I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not Baptist. I ain't Methodist. I ain't black. And I ain't white. Then what is you? I is more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. What is you? I am more than a conqueror through him who loved us. We, you, and me. We are more than a conqueror through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. My wife preached this about two weeks ago, and she tried to preach to you folk, amen, that you are not contenders. You are not after a belt. You are not after a title. You are not trying to get to the middle of the ring and declare yourself Ric Flair, amen. Before, before you got to the battle, let me, let me just talk to you for a moment because I got to preach tonight too. I got to have a half a voice to preach tonight for all of y'all of that are coming back tonight. How many of you in a battle right now? You got something going on right now. It's hard. You've been through something. You in it, you in it right. You can think of it right now. I can th we got stuff too. Before that battle began, began before it knocked on your door, before it divorced you, before it fell in love with somebody else, before the affair, before the lie, before the accusation, before the hate, before it all, before, before everything, before everything even started, God whispered in your ear one night and said, yet in all of these things, we, you, me, I are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you'll believe in him, 
and have faith in him. What you're dealing with right now, the hurt, the despair, the pain, what he has, what, what you may not even realize right now, that he's already obtained your victory. He already knows what it looks like. He already knows the date. All you've got to do is stand flat-footed, look up and say, when all I've done, all I can do, just stand and realize that, Lord, I'm going to trust you anyway. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to declare I made it through. Death, you ain't got me hurt you ain't got me grief you don't have me bankrupt none of it's got me why because God has already planned your victory can you believe that today God has already planned your victory amen come on you know you're sitting there and you're thinking about what you're going through right now you think pastor there's no victory that can come through this baby I've been there some of y'all don't know because I haven't sang it nor said it in a long time. I drove through Summersville, West Virginia, and I stopped on the side of the road because I could not see. I was crying so hard, and I said to God these words, either fix it or take me. Anybody ever been there? Maybe somebody's there right now. I said, Lord, either fix it or take me. I was crying so hard I didn't want to live another day. And, and, and for those, some of you know. Some of you don't know. And all of a sudden, without me pushing a button, the radio on my car, in my car, comes on. That was God saying, son, before the battle started, I already had victory. Don't lose sight of the victory. Don't lose sight of the victory. I'm sitting in Summersville, West Virginia, parked beside of the road. And I gave God two options. Fix it or kill me. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. And the radio comes on. And I didn't push the button. And they sang it last week. And the song, I went to the recording studio and, and, and recorded it. And I've sung it all over this country. Amen. And all of a sudden on that radio comes on. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. And it kept going. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. Say, preacher, I don't believe that. It's not your story. You don't have to believe it. Sitting beside the road, the radio comes on all by itself. And you know what? It was God. It was God saying, yet in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I want you all to notice this. In the verses prior, it says, if you love him, all things work out together for good to those that Love the Lord and are called according to... So all things work out to good if you love Him. By the time it gets to verse 38, it says, Yet in all of these things we are more than conquerors through Him that... Amen. It's all about love, baby. It's the reciprocation of you loving Him and Him loving you. Okay. Did y'all find Second Corinthians? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul is dealing with some false preachers and teachers and apostles. Some, you know, I know y'all have never met any, but there are people that pretend they got it and they don't. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul is dealing with fake prophets and they're trying to tell their story. You know, you ever met somebody that they, they caught a fish this big? These prophets are trying to tell everybody how great their miracles are and how great the testimonies are. And God did this and, and God did that. And finally, Paul, Paul says, I don't want to talk about myself. But if these fools won't shut up, let, let me go ahead and tell you my story. Let me tell you my story. Verse number 24. Uh, from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes. Minus one means 39. For those of you that don't know, 40 minus one is 39. Why? Because 40 meant that you had a death sentence. Now, you do the math. Five times I received 39 stripes. 
Three times I was beaten with rods. And once I was even stoned. And three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of water. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen. In perils of the Gentiles. In perils of the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. And among false brethren. In weariness and in toil. Wow. In sleeplessness often. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. <laughs> Besides other things. Besides other things. What comes up on me daily. My deep concern though. Is for the churches. <laughs> Now, so what does your resume look like? I was beaten with rods. I was whipped with stripes five times. 39 times five. Go ahead and count them. He was, he was stoned. Paul was stoned one time to where they thought he was dead. And they dragged him away. And as soon as those who stoned him walked away, the Bible says he just got up. They thought they killed him. They threw so many stones at him. They walked, he's dead. They walked away. And the Bible says when they walked away, he stood up and said, Yet in all of these things, I've been beaten, I've been striped, I've been shipwrecked, I've been hungry. Everyone has come against me. I've been stoned and I've spent half of my ministry in prison. But I got news for you. Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. I've been through the fire and through the flood, but I got good news for you. I made it through. I made it through. In other words, God had my victory before the battle ever started. God knew the end from the beginning. And those of you that are in this room thinking about giving up, you need to remind yourself that God already knows the end from the beginning. And if you'll hold on just a little while longer, you'll look back and say, I made it through. You look back and it'll just be another story. I made it through. I forget who I was telling the other day about the time in my life when I was homeless. I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm talking about me. Homeless. That was yesterday and this is now. Telling somebody when I was alone, that was yesterday, and this is now. <laughs> Telling somebody, y'all getting the point just yet? Don't make me climb these seats. <laughs> Telling somebody what it was like to go to the gas station and need gas and not have money in the bank account. Put the card in, and the card say, Decline. Y'all know what that's like? That was yesterday. Telling somebody what it was like to not have a job. No money coming in. That was so yesterday. Telling somebody about Lyme disease, but guess what? Yesterday. Telling people that I didn't want to believe in that God. But you know what? That was so yesterday. I made it through. I made it through. I don't have that anymore. I don't have that anymore. 
Y'all remember the other day when the preacher was being honest with you and I was telling them what it was like to lay in the bed and think about vengeance is mine. Think about how do I get back at those people that hurt. Y'all remember that sermon? Come on. Oh, boy, the preacher was so honest with us. Oh, but boy, I'm glad I'm not like the preacher. Oh, you wish you wasn't like the preacher. You remember when the preacher told you that he had the ability to hate some folks? That was so yesterday had diabetes that was so yesterday I was broken that was so yesterday I was in despair that was so yesterday I was full of confusion I didn't know which way to turn legalism messed up my mind I didn't know what God really was about but you know what that was so yesterday that was so yesterday I was so lost amen they were ready to put the to They were ready to close the door on my coffin. But that was so yesterday. My God, it was so yesterday. My God, it was so yesterday when they declared me dead. But that was so yesterday. And here I do sit in church today. Yet yet in all these things. Yet in all these things. Yet in all these. Has it been crazy enough for you yet? Yet in all these things. I've been beaten. That song would say, I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, rebuked, scorned, lied about. Come on. Sure as you're born, I've been up. I've been down. Oh, almost to the ground. But long as I got King Jesus, long as... Long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. <laughs> The other night, the worship team, last Sunday night, they sang a song that they just wrote. It was their song. They got together in the green room back here and they wrote a song. Hallelujah. Trisha, where's Trisha? Trisha, work with me, baby. I preach a sermon, she sends me a lyric. I preach a sermon, she sends me a lyric. We got to sing some of it. Amen. Y'all hear the next one? Chels, Kayla, Trisha, worship team. Marshall, y'all hear the next one? I made it through. Amen. The devil thought he got me, but I made it through. I thought about giving up, but I made it through. Death almost had me, but I made it through. Amen. Despair almost got me, but I made it through. Thought about quitting. Thought about giving up. Looked at no hope, but I made it through. Somebody ought to shout and give God a praise right there and say, I made it through. I've got to tell somebody I made it through. How'd you do it? Because I decided in all these things, I was more than a conqueror. I don't even have to fight it. What does it mean that I am more than a conqueror? God has already won my battle before the battle even knocked on my door. I can preach it hard, man. I can, I can hear, I can hear Noah stepping off the ark and he looked around and said I made it through I can see Abraham and Isaac coming off the mountain for those of you that know the Bible and Abraham looked at his boy Isaac and said baby we made it through come on I can see Joseph standing in the castle of the kingdom of Egypt as commander in chief And he thought about when he was falsely accused. Hey. Woo. And he thought about when he was in prison. And he thought about when all of his family hated his guts. You ain't been the first and you won't be the last. And Joseph looked at the kingdom and said, Now that it's all mine, I can say, I made it through. I can see Nehemiah standing upon a wall. Saying it might have been hard, but we pulled together and we made it through. Anybody hear me? For those of you that ain't on board just yet, I got a few more. I'm almost done, maybe. 
Maybe I can see lions. And I can see a man climbing out of a lion's den with no fear whatsoever. And I can see him climbing out of that den. And about the time he gets his leg up on top and they grab him by the arm and he just looks at him and says, I made it through. I made it through. I can see three Hebrew boys standing in a fiery furnace. When the king looked in and said, Boys, I know my calculation's not the best. But didn't we cast in three? <laughs> Clean off my glasses. Because I see four. And the fourth... And the fourth is not like the three that we threw in. <laughs> I can see three Hebrew boys coming out of a fiery furnace. <laughs> and everybody says, what was it like? And they said, we made it through. We made it through. <laughs> Y'all ready, man? I'm trying to. Lazarus in the tomb, already dead. Already dead, shut up. Bugs trying to decide which part of him they're going to start eating. But all of a sudden, a voice comes through. He's in his grave clothes. And all of a sudden, death heard Lazarus come forth. And the dead man stood up and began to walk. <laughs> and he got outside the tomb and he heard the, voice, the same voice say, Loose him and let him go. And that night at dinner, somebody said, Lazarus, wasn't you dead for four days? <laughs> yep. What happened? I made it through. I hear Jesus as he's hanging on the cross saying, I'll make it through. I hear Jesus telling death, I'll make it through. And then after the stone was rolled away, I can see the man of God folding his grave clothes. And he looks over at death and says, hey, you can hang out in the tomb all you want. But as for me, I told you, I made it through. <laughs> oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, hey, where is your victory? Yet in all of these things, we are more. Hey, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Sit down, sit down. You say, preacher, why are you preaching like that? I'm going to tell you. Because when you get into something real, see, preacher, what's happening to you right now? You don't see it. Some of the, some of the glory field people in this room understand it. They know it right now. They know it's happening. But right now, my body is tingling from head to toe. Preacher, I don't understand why you're so hyper today. Why you, why you got to be screaming like that? I don't choose how to preach it. I'm just a messenger. But I've been in it long enough to know that when I feel what I feel right now, that demons are about to be crushed. 
That sickness is going to be healed. Resurrection power is in the room. I've been in it long enough to know that God has shown up to work a miracle on somebody's behalf. I've been in it long enough to know that the devil is about to lose a battle. I've been in it long enough to know that the devil is about to lose a son. That the devil is about to lose a daughter. That a body is about to lose cancer. I've been in it long enough to know that Jesus has declared victory in your life. That the devil is a liar and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I've been in it long enough to know that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of those that love him, the things that God